Well, welcome to worship this eighth Sunday after Pentecost as we gather together in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We continue here at Good Shepherd, and you're probably all quite aware of it, that uh, as we move through summer, we are still maintaining some of the uh, requirements for getting together in worship. We are open, uh, but we will be wearing masks during worship. Uh, you, you are welcome to sing. Uh, with, with the masks on, we don't think that that's much of an issue anymore. Um, but, but do keep your masks on while you sing. And uh, we'll be revisiting this requirement as well as we go along through the summer. Our worship today is setting three of the uh, hymn book, the, the red hymn book, but you'll have everything um, on the PowerPoint in front of you. You won't need to worry about a, a hymn book today. So let us begin our time of worship together with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. If you'd all please rise with me. Oh, and perhaps before we begin, uh, uh, first of all, uh, we, we welcome today Pastor Art uh, Weiss, from uh, Camp Kuriakis, and Art will be with us today. He'll bring the message as well. We also have a couple of young people here from the camp, uh, camp staff, who will be with us this coming week here at Good Shepherd. We have uh, a day camp all week long, and they'll uh, let us know what that's going to be like uh, at the end of our service during the announcements. So welcome to our, our guests from Camp Kuriakis. Yes, welcome. Now let us join together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and things to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Our almighty God strengthen you now with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering song, Come, now is the time to worship.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, the Lord of mercy, for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the Peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God. Also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful, powerful and, and compassionate, compassionate you your shepherd, shepherd, your people, people faithfully feeding and, and protecting us. Heal, heal each, each of us and make us a whole people, people that, that we, we may embody the justice and peace of your, of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is taken from Jeremiah chapter 23, starting at verse 1. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, 
and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is taken from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at the 11th verse. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision. A physical circumcision is made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord.
he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over again, they came to the land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. for him. He went and found the phone, and he picked up the phone, and saying to no one in particular, I want my daddy! Out of sheer frustration, he needed to have compassion. himself at other points in the Bible, in the New Testament, as being the good shepherd. But this point of seeing people in need, people needing help, people hurting, broken, hungry, and Jesus has compassion, cares for them, like a shepherd. morning, you notice the verses skips over a couple of stories. And the stories that are skipped over that happen in between our reading this morning is the feeding of the 5,000 where Jesus gives them something to eat. And then there's the crossing of the sea. And Jesus comes walking to them on walk to the 
disciples on water in a storm and calms the waters. His compassion goes out not just to those who were around him, not just to those apostles, disciples who were with him, but to whomever he met. He took and shared with them his message. He met them where they were at. He cared for them in their need. Our text begins this morning with the return of the apostles from their being sent out by Jesus two by two. They come back to report all the wonderful things that have now been done by them on, in Jesus' name. And how they were able to form acts of healing. And that they too were teachers of people to share with them the message which they had heard from Jesus. But in doing that, upon returning, Jesus could see in them also that they now were tired and weary. And yes, people were continuing to come to them to hear more, to be present with them, so that there was no time for them to rest, not even the time to relax and enjoy a meal together. And so he says, let's go off, let's go have a retreat to a quiet place by ourselves where I can hear all of your stories where I can share with you more and teach you more about what it means to be one who follows. It is important for us to take those times, times for renewal, times for enrichment, times to be fed ourselves with new knowledge, with a new understanding. Yeah, time just to share stories. You see, our text today, really in all of the three components which are shared with us, and even in the other two lessons today, from the Old Testament and from Ephesians, talk about how it is our call to gather people together. To gather together as God's people. To not have divisions. Our second lesson speaks very pointedly about that between the difference between the Gentiles and the Jews and the argument that was taking place there. That Paul calls on them to come together, to gather together because they are one in Christ. And in our text today, Jesus says to his disciples, let us come together. Let us gather around so that we each can share our experience, share our stories, and be renewed and refreshed once again. And that happens then, even though when they get to the place, the deserted place as it is to be, it's no longer deserted. People who saw Jesus and then taking off went to be there and they got there ahead of them. They must have been really fishermen by trade, but maybe they just had an ill wind against them, which is the ill wind that comes from the storm later on in the story, but they got there ahead of them, and instead of saying, out of the way, we're going, no, Jesus has compassion on them, and he brings them together to heal the sick, to teach them the message which he is bringing. Gather them together for a meal, to be fed, strengthened, nourished in their lives and in their journeys. And so you and I this day also are people who are called to follow Jesus, to be his disciples. And I think we should heed these words to gather people together. Yes, it's been difficult for the last day. I know it has been difficult, but we've 
found ways to reach out and touch people still when we could not physically be present one to another. We could gather together and share stories and share information, share a time of renewal, a time to just set back and pause a bit. And now as we begin once again to have the opportunities to come together together, we do so with great caution because we don't want those times when we cannot gather to come upon us again. And in all of that, the reason for it is having compassion for the other. That we care about the other point that we ourselves do not deprive ourselves, deny ourselves of some things, like the joy of being together with others, sharing coffee, refreshments. It'll come. It'll come. But we are compassionate to care for those who way in which we can all rejoice, in a way in which we all can be fed and renewed. This morning, too, we will come together to receive the body and blood of Christ. We join together as a community. We gather for that purpose, to be fed by God's Word, to be fed by God's presence, to be fed by God himself and strengthen to go forth and be the, his compassionate people in the world. To take and live as Jesus lived, caring for those around us, being compassionate people. There are many ways for us to do that. And we need to look for ways in which we can see that happening and occurring over and over again in our lives and in the lives of those around us. And we need to share those stories and experiences that we have. And we need to take the opportunities to take and get away for a time to renew ourselves because the task of what God puts before us is not a light task, yet it is the one to which we enjoy being a part of. Because we know what great love God has shown towards us, his people, and how he has cared for us and given to us all that is necessary for us So as we as God's people gather this day, may we take and recognize that it is He who calls us. It is God who gathers us together. God who comes to us to renew us and strengthen us and provide for us every day. And to Him we offer thanks and praise on this day and every day. Because we do see our God as the good shepherd. Amen. Amen. Now may grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be and abide in your hearts now and always. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in singing our hymn of the day, To Be Your Presence. Please rise with me as you are able.
Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Holy Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and for all of God's creation. Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. <clears throat> Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Inspire this church. As we gathered online yesterday to accomplish the business of this synod and move forward in our mission as a church, grant that your Holy Spirit that has inspired us in deliberations and decisions, now encourage, strengthen, and use us to put into action all that is needed for these next years in this synod. And as we pray for our synod, we also pray for our camps who have struggled greatly over this past year. We pray that this summer begins a time for them of renewed strength and energy. We ask your blessing and your presence at Camp Curiacus as they endeavor to continue the mission that has been set before them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Keep safe all of those who work in the fields and pastures. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Move your people everywhere to be stewards of creation that you have called us to be. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats to seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Through the work of your people, feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, shelter the homeless. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And nourish this congregation. As we ought to, we pray for all of those in this congregation that we know who need our prayers. We pray for those who suffer, whether in body, mind, or spirit. And we pray for those who grieve the loss of someone close to them. Hear now the prayers we offer from our hearts, even those prayers too deep for words. Prepare a table, O oh God, where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home. We give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with all the saints in heaven. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all of our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving help and your gracious love poured out upon us all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. 
I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with one another, albeit from a distance. Please be seated. As this is our time of offering, once again, a special word of thanks and thanksgiving to all of you who have supported the work of Good Shepherd through this past year and beyond. And we do pray that we continue to give out of a grateful heart for all that God has done. And with that in mind, uh, we pray that you can continue to provide your offerings uh, through regular mail, automated deposit, or by e-transfer, uh, as well as um, when you come in this morning, you probably saw the offering plates at the back. We also welcome, as we reopen, uh, gifts made uh, in person in that way as well. Let us prepare for our great thanksgiving. Please rise. <laughs> and called us to be the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive your body, for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power,
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your spirit upon us now, the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite the musicians at this point to come first.
Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and to everlasting life. Amen. Running around, see how much energy the communion gives you. This is amazing. Amen. Now our almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our ascending song, Praise the Lord.
be seated for a few brief announcements. First of all, and once again, a special thank you to, uh, the, to Pastor Art and Hannah and Tanner back there. You'll be seeing them here at Good Shepherd uh, throughout the week. Our, our day camps run from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, and uh, with preparations and, and uh, meeting afterwards, uh, it'll take a little bit longer than just the 9 to 12, but, but you'll see them around here, and they'll be doing a lot of work with a bunch of kids uh, and, and some of our own youth that are going to be helping them uh, along the way as well. I'm going to ask them to come forward, and they're going to... Uh, Tell us a little bit more about uh, what's going on this week, and perhaps a little bit about what the camp's doing, too. Now go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord.